recitation style, or, or kind of hearing your voice, your inflection, your cadence. Uh, Lane, you talk really fast. Wow, I didn't really know that before, because your text is, is written a different way. Um, emphasizes, again, you as a person, uh, makes you approachable, makes you more approachable, um, but it also reinforces the, that welcome screen, right? So students are, are saying, oh, how do I work through this class? Oh, I have a little text right here that talks about it, but on a video, I can show them how to access the course. So on this welcome video, this introduction video, I only have it five minutes long. I don't want it any longer than five to seven. It's kind of the max. But I walked students through the course. Like, hey, welcome to the course. Uh, this is what we're going to be covering this week. Uh, these are some of the objectives I really uh, have and are, uh, the goals I have for you. And let's just walk through the course. Uh, if you want to access the material, you just go up to modules, you click that, you open it here, and this is how it's going to work. You can show them versus just telling them. So it reinforces it. And Kaltura is an amazing tool for that. Um, and this is something that I've done in a lot of courses. Uh, I've done a, a video of like one each week. It takes me about five minute, uh, 10 minutes to put the whole thing together, PowerPoints and all the way through once I sit going on it. And I did this for some of the courses that were blended. And I did about four weeks worth of them. And I didn't really get any comments from the students. So I was like, oh, man, these aren't really that successful. I don't want to spend more time on these videos. I'm just going to drop it. Uh, now it's week four. So I've done four of those. Uh, week five, students came in the first day of class. And it was just like an hot course. Like, wait, where is the week in review? Right? What, what's going on here? It's like, well, you guys are watching it? It's like, yes, that's the first thing we do every week is we watch the week in review. It's like, really? What do you get? It's, like, it's just the same stuff as the text. and just reinforcing the material. It's like, yeah, but it gives us a much, allows us to interact with that um, text. Or they're thinking, just, I just understood it better. And I just understood what you were trying to do. I understood what we were doing this week and how it connected from last week and then what we were going to be doing in the future. I just, I really found it comforting to know this is kind of the goals of the course. Like, oh, really? So that was uh, a tool that I found was really useful, much more than I thought. I was just using it because I was like, well, I want them to kind of, you know, hear my voice and I wanted to, you know, make sure that they knew that I was still paying attention to them even if we didn't have class that week because it was a blended course, we didn't have it all the time. Um, but they really used it for the content as well. So these introductory videos, uh, maybe having one every week, again, you can get it going really fast. It doesn't have to be high production. If I were to show you it, I would probably be embarrassed because there are lots of ums and ums. Uh, so just check that. Just think about that as well in terms of helping students walk through the material and looking at material through a different modality, a different lens. The other aspect as well of thinking about this welcome page is not leaving it up the whole time, right? So after week two, Giving them the course, course duration is probably kind of pointless at that point. Telling them the title of the, of the course, or hey, if you can contact me, that my name is Lane Sunwall. Uh, welcome message isn't as relevant by week two and three as it was the first day of course. Uh, so consider um, either replacing your homepage and setting, resetting it not as a welcome page, maybe as modules, right? Um, I think this was Penn State. It was what, Penn, was it Penn State that did that review. Uh, students, they don't really care if there's a big fancy welcome screen on their um, course homepage. They just want to get to the material as quick as possible. So maybe have a mod, just have the homepage open up to modules. You can set that pretty easily. Or you can, um, if you want to keep up with it, you can have a regularly updated content. I've done this before as well, um, where I've just had um, announcements, or I had that um, the weekend review video at the top of my screen of the whole page, the first thing they saw when they came into the course. But don't just leave up the old introduction. Either replace it with modules, so students can just get to the content right away, or have a different page that updates regularly. The other thing uh, that worked really well uh, was course expectations page. And this is kind of sounds really kind of boring, but it's also really important to think about how your course is perceived online, right? That's kind of a big shift. Uh, course administration, uh, the expectations page is just basically course administration is kind of maybe just basic stuff that you usually include at the back end of your syllabus, right? So uh, expect expectations, explanation, what are you, what's the expectation, what are you trying to get out of this? Tips for success in the course, right? Your notifications policy, your email policy, your interaction guidelines, you know, be respectful of their students. If it's an online course, don't type in all caps because that's perceived as yelling. Uh, right, so just this basic stuff, you think, oh, this is maybe boring, right? Um, actually, I had students comment on the explanations page because your course is a website. Right? It's not a live course. And when students, and when we look at a web page, especially one that we didn't write, this is how we read it. Right? We don't read all the material 
top to bottom equally, right? We scan it. We read the top couple lines, and then as, our, uh, as we get further down, we're perceiving this, this is less important, we start scanning. This is an eye chart from different websites. Uh, this is one with pictures. Pictures are something that people really focus on, and then they go down. Uh, and even Google as well, that's why those top three hits are generally advertisements on Google, because those are the ones that people always look at. These are the ones they look at, and this kind of stuff is where people are not paying attention. Students are doing the same thing with your website, right? When you give them a syllabus and piece of paper, it's saying something different, right? You're printing it out, you're saying this material is all important. When you put it on a web page, and that material starts at the top, that's the stuff they see as important, and as they scroll down, they're saying that's less important, less important, less important, I'm not paying attention. So, if you can, Break up your pages. Don't make pages huge and long. Break them up. It's okay. You won't overwhelm your students. Uh, break it up so each time a student clicks, they're like, oh, new page, this top row of information is important. They want me to look at this. They really want me to look at this. I'm going to read it. Whereas if it was just connected to the page before, and is that the middle or the bottom, they're saying, oh, this is a lot lower level of information. You can maybe train your students to do this. The whole idea of this wayfinding is to make it easy and self-explanatory, and, and just really obvious to students, this is what you're trying to do, this is what's important. So when you're, th when you're building your um, web page in Canvas or any other LMS, really think of Krug's first law of usability, don't make me think, right? Don't make me think about how to access this content. Make them think about history or chemistry or geology or whatever it is you're teaching. Each page should be focused. Um, and just remember to break things up. And I had students comment about this because again, we're talking about you know, how do you design in Canvas. And they thought, oh wow, when I read this expectations page, I actually read these first couple chap um, paragraphs where I don't usually do that when they're all just kind of at the bottom of the syllabus. So we, so we talked about that. Um, so that's the next, that's the next aspect. The other thing that worked really well was my use, of, was just use the modules in general and just organization. Um, some people organize by pages, and that's cool too. I'm just going to talk about, about modules. Uh, when I first started teaching a long time ago in D2L, um, I would take all my um, reading content, I put that in a folder. I take all my quizzing content, all my quizzes for the semester, put that in a folder. I put all my lecture material, I put that in a folder. So if a student wanted to do work in my class, they had to access multiple subfolders and then come pop, pop back out, access another subfolder, go in there, find the, the article pop back out, then go back down and access the other subfolder for lectures, look at that, and then come back out, and then hope and pray that they didn't miss anything in that big cacophony of file structures, right? Module, the whole idea here is to break that course organization uh, and, um, and to really kind of make that, uh, let students quickly and clearly see what, um, where they're supposed to go for course content and what order to access that content, right? Um, don't make them hunt for it. Don't have to click multiple things. They just go here and they can click they can start this module, they just click on syllabus, they'll have a little arrow thing at the bottom, they'll click the next one, the next one, the next one. They can pop back up the module and they can see little check marks next to everything they have done, right? Or if they have to go and maybe go and eat or go to practice or go to work uh, and they have to come back to the course, they can again see once they've gone through these modules, they can see what they have accomplished. They also see they can work down and see, okay, I started, I'm here, I now only have two things left, I can now go to that. So again, it's just really focusing on organization and wayfinding and, and really focusing on helping students walk through the material in a chronological order without confusing them with lots of extra and extraneous button clips. Um, the other thing as well is that I think it's really important for modules to organize it somehow chronologically. You can do it topically as well, but put those topics in chronological order. Uh, I organized it by day because it was a one week course. You might want to organize it by weeks. Days might be a little bit. Uh, and the other cool thing about Canvas is that you can, so at the um, end of week one, uh, you can take the module and just click and drag on the little waffle and pop it down to the bottom, right? So you can, so when students come to their course the next time, now the most relevant material is automatic, is at top, week two. And then when week two is over, you can just click and drag and put week two at the bottom. So you can make it really easy for students by the time it's week 13 or 14, you don't have to scroll to the bottom of your module page and find 13. It's just right there at top, easy for them to access. So that was modules, and you, I'm, I'm just going to, there's a ton of things more you could talk about modules, and maybe in the question and answer we can, we can discuss those.
But I also wanted to spend time uh, just talking about what didn't do, what didn't work right, right? What didn't work so well? What am I going to do differently? Well, again, I'm working with grad students who are building courses in Canvas. Building courses in Canvas. And they, they didn't know all of it. They, I assume, much, too much knowledge on how to use Canvas, right? Uh, we often think that, especially even our graduates, the undergraduate students, like, oh, they've grown up with Facebook, right? For them, uh, the two, there's no recollection of the 1990s, it's just the thousands and the 2010s. This is an age of technology. Of course they're going to know how to use Canvas. No, that's not necessarily the case. Make learning the teaching technology part of your learning objectives, right? Just put some time in that first week of the course, front load the effort and say, this is, this is Canvas. We're just going to walk through the, how do you access this, how do you get to the, the people, how do you get to your classes, how do you access your discussions. Just show them that first week, this is how you use the LMS, so the rest of the semester they don't have to focus on it, right? They can just think, oh, this is, uh, this is how I'm around you, this is easy. But you've shown them, and that's the important part. The other thing you can do as well, and I've done this as well with good effect, but I could have done it more, would just have a low stakes exam on that first week of the course that reviews the syllabus. So you have them go through the syllabus and the course expectation, and then have a really low stakes exam at the, at the end of the week that just asks them basic questions on how do you access material on Canvas? How do you go get to this page on Canvas? Make an open book. Let them retake the test if they don't get it right. The, the, pro, the issue is not so much about making sure they know the answers, but that they they can get to that knowledge of, of understanding the content, right? That it's a formative exercise as well. That the quiz itself is teaching them. And that's kind of how you can do that. Um, it's also worth a grade, so that makes them a little bit more But just an example on that, uh, with the fact that he had a, a quiz that had like a number of answers about what are my office hours? Yeah. And uh, and who and what is the best what is the best way to get hold of me? Uh, or, or do you have questions about who's who's your primary library resources? Yeah, absolutely. So, so, because now you've had to think about that. And, and I'm sorry, yeah, and the, and the, the idea was they had to go into the Canvas course of various other documents to go find the answer to come back and answer the first question. And you probably built that quiz based on emails that you had the previous semester. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, I'll well, <laughs> take questions. Where's the exam? Where, where's my? Where's the librarian that I'm supposed to contact? Yeah, let's just put that in the exam. You had to think about that, answer a question on it. You probably had to look that up. I did not include time estimates for modules and topics. And you're like, well, that's what? What? So my students kept on asking me, uh, how long were the modules going to be? How long are the topics going to be? Students in, in today they have to they do practice. They have um, they have to go to work. They have to, a lot of courses they have to do. They're bu they're busy, right? They want to let them know, let them go ahead and budget their time so that they know that, hey, this assignment's going to take only a half hour. I have that time blocked. I can do it. Or this assignment's going to be two hours. I don't have time for it right now. I'm going to have to do something else. Let that students plan ahead and budget their time. You will also find that it helps you manage the course more effectively as well. So if you have a big assignment that's due the same week of a big essay, maybe you think, oh, wait, this is going to take four hours, and I have a big essay due this week? Oh, let's move that to another time. Right? It helps you organize and it helps students organize. I definitely will be doing that next month. Uh, also, there are still bugs in the course design, and this references the sheet as well. Um, I really should have had someone walk through the course as a student to provide me with the feedback on what I should change. It's not enough just to maybe go through as a student yourself and the student viewer, because not everything works exactly how you expect, and you also know all the little bugs in the course. You built it, it's kind of if you're blind to it, have someone else walk through the course as a student. Let them show you, oh, I don't really understand this, or why do I have a time uh, spent? Why do I have to do this here? And this doesn't make sense. So again, I think having just partnering with someone and ask them, hey, what are your opinions of the course? Is this easy to understand? And uh, that's part of the sheet today. And that's the end of the presentation. I hope I didn't go too long. This was originally a three-hour course that I had built. So <laughs> I've been trying to get it down. Let's see if we have any more questions. No, we don't. But I, I appreciate your attention. So uh, if there are any questions for why, we can ask those now. Yes? Um, you, back on your modules slide, you had the, some sort of checkbox on the module. What's that? Um, you said that like when they're done, they know they've done the Oh, yeah. So I don't know that. There's not a checkbox. It's the cloud. Yeah. Oh, that's, yeah, that's, uh, those are just restrictions I put on there. 
And these are, this isn't my view, so it's using clouds. But as, student, as people work through an assignment, you can have it set so that there's a little check mark after they access the page where they've done it. But how does that show just because of what you did there? This, this is just showing up, this is showing up the way it did because this is in my view, yeah, not but, as student. But, it's because, but was it because you put the completion yeah, you have to on, on that module? No, it's not because you have that, that on the module. It's just as you work through it, as you click it as a student, you can, <laughs> you can review that. You can see the little check mark. I see. And I think that sets that automatically now, but I could be wrong. Is anyone? So I think at least the using the I I don't. I'm not familiar with that either. I think it's because we are instructors and we look at it from instructor mm -hmm. view and we don't see that. Oh, I suspect that if we go into student view and then go look at modules, mm -hmm. we would see that. Or if we talk to students and they look at it, it shows up for them. Yep. But it's funny. It's one of those things that I also like. I'm in this teach online at UW thing, and I never get those. And they talk about it in the course, but I don't get them because I'm a sub account admin, so I never, I never see them. Right. Sid has some thoughts on this. Um, no, I'm a sub account admin too, so I see <laughs> all kinds of things. But in the Canvas language for it is "mark as done." Yeah. yeah. So I don't, I'm not finding the page that tells clearly tells how to use it. But I know if you Google Canvas "mark as done," um, that that could be a step towards finding. Uh, the information on how to be able to use it. In this, okay. course, in this course, I never said anything on that, but I, I never set that myself, but I could see that in student view as I work through it, that there's little check marks yeah. that is great out. Okay. <coughs> so, yeah. Was this on modules or assignments or? So you'll see it on each of those little line items on syllabus, course expectations, getting started quiz, technical uh, help discussion form. Okay. You, every time a student clicks on that. So maybe they didn't read it, maybe they did, whatever. The issue is, is that students can see that, hey, I've clicked on this, I've accessed this, this is something that I've maybe done. Sure. Um, so if you, if they have access to that and you click on it, Again, I don't go back as a student all the time to check that. I, what I, from what I remember, yes, but I don't want to put what you have on So, but the, but yeah, so that, that's the, I can't tell you. But, but, you said well, I, I'm sorry, I, I missed that question because I was researching that question. So, I don't know. Yeah, we can, we can try this. Yeah. Um, so, I just made uh, Maria and Stephanie's module from yesterday in our active teaching lab um or no sorry i made a, a elise davis's module required that you complete all items mm -hmm. so you are all students in this so you can don't know where to go to do that to turn a module on to make it required to complete items that's, no. that's kind of a hidden thing mm -hmm. go to the modules page as instructor mm -hmm. go to the modules there's a gear icon off on the right of each of your modules if you go to edit the edit the module, there's like three variables to edit. Edit the name, which is the only required element. The other two elements, though, are where you're headed in the bottom one is uh, requirements. And we have a section on that one yesterday at the teaching lab, although I don't know if anybody has to do it for it. Yeah. So I just go to the module itself, I click the gear icon next to the module name, and then this will come up. I mean, you can set up the prerequisites so what they need to be doing before they get into that module and the requirements of completing that module. <clears throat> because the items within the module are pages and assignments and things, um, I believe that the mark as done happens on the page level rather than in the module level, so it doesn't care if you're in the module. If you go to the pages through the pages um, navigation item and not ever see them in the module, it'll still mark it as having access to But there's, so there's two different, there's two different um, tools going on. There's one just that Mark has done for the students, and then there's this as well, which right. is just separate. And this opens up or keeps hidden certain content within Canvas itself. Mm -hmm. Good question. So and this brings a, 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 a sort of a follow-up, a, a related question of, um, did you have all of the information, all of your modules visible to the students right away, or did you set them up so that they are only seen at certain dates 
as at certain dates. I usually, when I teach, I have things open so that they can see everything as they go along. Um, since this is a course that was kind of meta in that it was teaching people how to use Canvas, we worked on that. And so I, I, I talked about the pros and cons of that. So it's, it's kind of, I'm open to either way, but I usually leave it open so students can access anything uh, whenever they want. And there are pros and cons. So at least for your course, how did you do that? You had things only show up that they were going to be working on at a certain time, right? No. Because otherwise it would be too overwhelming. We just there. dumped it all out there. You dumped it all out there. Yeah, but the idea of moving the modules as we go is really smart. We didn't do that. We just went through it and we were done. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes it can look overwhelming for students mm -hmm. because they see all of this stuff and they're like, oh my gosh, <clears throat> this course is going to kill me. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, information is good to know, right? So you know that this is going to be a course that's going to kill me unless I'm really good at my time management. So, you know, sometimes it's better to have that up front rather than as a surprise each week. Like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it's so much for this week. Any other questions? Let's take some time and you all have that uh, sandbox courses. Get in there. We've got some instructions on uh, making this uh, a welcome page, and you can just do this on any page, and, or you can set it up as an assignment, I suppose, and you can go through that thing so that they have to answer questions, or a quiz, um, and put in things like a welcome message, or a placeholder for a welcome message, and some contact information, try to invent an iframe um, that leads to your LinkedIn site, or your About Me site, or some other professional site so that students can go in and find a little bit more information about you rather than you're the person that stands up in front of the class. And if you have questions, um, yeah. we're available for your we wander around. Sure.
<laughs> Thoughts on this? What do you guys think about these uh, welcome pages and home pages and organizing stuff? Any other ideas that you've seen or used that um, that you recommend or not recommend? Well, we, uh, we, we tested it. I'm sorry, my name's Cliff. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she had her question about, um, you know, if you've got a module that gets turned on the feature where you're tracking completion, so you, you require that each of these pages be viewed. She was wondering, can that, can any of those individual object pages or the quizzes or anything, can they be moved to another module and still retain the check mark of completion? Mm -hmm. And the answer appears to be no. I did a quick little test. Good. If you move it up, because because really what you're doing, you're turning on that completion feature at the module level. And if you move it into the new module, you got to go back to the module level and return on the feature to track, and it just doesn't know. Oh, this page was viewed while it existed over there, and now it's going to retain the viewing state once we move it up in there. So, what's the use case for that? What 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 prompted the question? Well, so Lane's idea I thought was awesome for moving the content for the day or the week or whatever up to the top so they don't have to scroll through all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But I was thinking, okay, rather than just take the module that used for my class in um, and moving that down, and um, the quizzes are two weeks, so they have one week near the top and then the other one would be way at the bottom. Um, if I combine those uh, into another module, would their content disappear as having been done? She's saying, you know, by the time you get to module oh. week, tweak for 11 and 12, there's still a bunch of these modules that have been done. And she's thought it'd be kind of nice to have one big master we're done with this module. You know, module, oh. module names, everything for now, everything, yeah, all the order. And, and just move it all in there, and then that way she think the students could still find all the content, but it's just in one module instead of being strung out across 13 modules. So, but I, I might caution kids. Um, I, I might suggest if you if you have you already have it set up in modules to leave that structure as much alone as possible. That's when we figured we could yeah. just move it down yeah. and let it go find the stuff in the and, it, and it's just like syllabi, where I was talking about the syllabi. If you have if you put it all in one, it's going to open up into a monster one, and eventually it's just going to be super hard to find anything. So that's yeah, that's <laughs> but it's a good it's a good thought. If you'd almost have to go back and replace the module by putting in all those headers, you know, the little yeah. um, text header at each one. Yeah. Yeah, so that, but also I just thought, what about like retention for next semester? Mm -hmm. Next semester rolls around, and if you now move all your content around, you now copy it in the next semester, you gotta break all that and you really want to do it again. One of the things I'd like to do is uh, not only good learning, but also easier teaching. So that's, that falls into the category of next semester, don't make more work for yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah. Having different forms of exams, um, having exams that 
you know, test in not just text ways, but also using visual elements or using audio elements like the daily, the audio daily double on Jeopardy or H5P if you want to get super creative, you can embed H5P questions into it. So students do a little small little like kind of quiz or a, a, a project and then they can go and do an exam question on it. So we can do some cool things with that. But I think just thinking of an exam in a different way is to me the most important way. So I've heard of the, the, the frame assessment of learning, but also assessment as learning. Yeah. So yeah. giving that feedback so is a cool way to do that. Four words versus four. Lots of, lots of, lots of cumulative small point things so that you can sort of drill into them in some way. Yeah. Distributed practice across the country. And you get a PhD in education or something. <laughs> <laughs> Does that answer your question? Yeah, that's right. Thank you. Other thoughts? Things you've seen, things you've done, can you recommend against doing?
wonder how advantageous to hear it as we instruct to hear it and feedback from the student about something that isn't working right. I mean, are, are you guys, you guys are aware that like all of these things are web pages, right? So I mean, everything has a unique URL. So if they have any question about a page that you've created or a particular part of a quiz, you know, they can just go grab that URL and send that to you. Now you know exactly where they were when they, when they had their issue. So I'm going to kind of explain it. It's on that one page with one word on that picture and it's about three fourths of the way down and you see the URL. Interesting uh, quick tip before yeah. we leave today. If you change the title of a page after it's been linked, or the title of a module after it's been linked, all of the links will not be changed. So you need to come back in. So if you say, oh, I'm going to build all of these page one topic area, blah, 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 and then you go and you're like, oh, really, the topic area is more like blah, 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 blah and you change that, then with the pages that were linked to that, you've got to go back, otherwise, when you click on it, you'll be like, this page does not exist, and you're going to panic, because you're like, oh my god, I spent eight hours on that page. Go back, go to pages, it's in pages over here, it just lost its link here. So, don't freak out, I did that several times. <laughs> um, it's just hard to, it's, it's a weird thing. Canvas does not make live changes or does that update changes that you've made in that way? Yeah. So it does update them if you go to the next, if you need to transfer to the next semester, right? It'll change the course code. The course dates, yeah. If you put that well, if, you, if, you yeah. Took, if I took this course and I'm going to teach it again next yeah. semester, right? I could take this course, export it into a new course, right? right? And it'll change the numbers on my list. But if you have on the syllabus a link to course expectations and then you change the course expectations, expectations for this class, yeah. the link on the syllabus page should have this program. Yeah. So that's that stinks a little bit. Um, our time is out. Um, please fill out a little green evaluation means they help us figure out how to make this things much better. Please also help me thank you. Are you going to pass? Thank you for your likes today.